Hello guys and welcome back to the FE exam review series where I cover the most common FE problems that you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video, we'll be covering another static section problem, specifically under part F, moment of inertia. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, Okay guys, so in this problem, we are giving this shape and we need to find the radius of gyration about the x and the y axis respectively. So the first thing we gotta do is go to the reference handbook and grab the equation, okay? So here we are giving the equation for the radius of gyration. So we have rx is equal to the square root of ix over a, and then we have ry is equal to the square root of iy over a, okay? Now a, that's just going to be the total area. Now, for the moment of inertia, that's the one you have to be careful with, right? Because like as we discussed in the last three different problems, there are three different types of moment of inertia, right? You can find moment of inertia about the centroidal axis or about the y and y axis or about the given axis, right? So which one are we going to use for to find the radius of gyration? Well, we, when you are trying to solve for the radius of gyration, always use the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis, okay? So... With that being said, to find the moment of inertia about the central row x and y axis, we would have to use the parallel axis theorem. Now, one of the previous problems, we already solved for the moment of inertia about the central row x axis. If you haven't watched that video yet, make sure that you guys do that first and then come back to this problem. Then find the moment of inertia about the central row y axis. And then from there, you can easily find the radius of gyration about the y and the x axis. So with that information, why don't you guys give this problem a try? Go ahead and pause the video and I will see you in a little bit. By the way guys, if you find this problem helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely. Also, we do have this cheat sheet that covers the most important concepts that you need to know for your FE exam. And it also covers some of the concepts that we will cover in today's video. So make sure that you download it if you haven't yet. Okay, now back to this problem. So the first thing we're gonna do guys is find the radius of gyration about the x-axis. And as we mentioned earlier, it's going to, we're gonna use this equation, right? So the square root of ix over the total area. Now we also mentioned ix is going to be the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, right? Now, if you guys remember from one of our previous problems, we actually did already solve for the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, right? So it's right here. So if you guys remember, we first found the centroid about the y, and then after that, we calculated for the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. And so what we're gonna do now is just grab this answer, right? So again, if you haven't watched this problem, make sure that you guys do. So what we're gonna do here is just write down, write down uh, the ix, which is 1.7 times 10 to the power of 8, okay? And let's keep track of our units, because if you guys see here, the units of radius of gyration has to be in millimeters, okay? And then we're going to divide it by the total area. And so that's going to be easy, right? So we, we have both shapes are rectangles, so we're just going to do b times h, right? So we're going to do 25 times 300, that's for this shape here, let's call it 1. And then we're going to do plus the second shape, this one. So it's going to be 400 times 25, okay? And then what we're going to do is just take the square root of this. Now, if you guys plug in the numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 98.6, okay? And again, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the units. So here we have millimeters to the power of 4. Now, here we're going to have millimeters to the power of 2, right? Because it's the area, so it's going to be squared. So then these two units cancel, and we're going to be left with millimeters squared, right? But if you take the square root of that, that gives you millimeters, right? And that's exactly the units that we want, okay? Now, if we also take a look at the multiple choice here, so we know already that the answer is going to be either A or D, right? It can't be B or C because we have the answer here as 98.6. Now let's go ahead and solve for the radius of gyration about the y-axis, okay? So again, this is the equation we're going to use. So first, we have to find the moment of inertia about the y-axis, and we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem. Now, before we can actually use this equation here, first, we need to find the centroid of the whole shape about the x-axis. Because if you guys remember, dx is going to be this distance from the centroid of the whole shape 
right, to the centroid of each shape. So we need to find the centroid of the whole shape above the x-axis. So that we call that usually x bar. Now, there is a centroid equations on the reference handbook, and we can use that equation, or we can take a look at this shape, and we can easily see that this shape is actually symmetric, right? So we have some sort of a symmetry here. So if I cut through this shape here, you guys will see that what we have on this side is the same as what we have on this side. So if you take this shape, you fold it into half, we have the same thing, right? So therefore we have symmetry, and so the centroid above the x-axis is just going to be half of 400, which is going to be 200 millimeters. Now that we solved for the centroid above the x-axis, let's go ahead and apply the parallel axis theorem equation so that we can solve for iy. Now let's start with shape one. So we need to find the moment of inertia about the central or y-axis. So here we can just grab the equation from the reference handbook. So again, we're going to use this table here. And since we have a rectangle, so IYC is just B cubed H over 12. Okay, so that's the equation we're going to use. So, and also let's go ahead and just write, uh, identify these variables. So that's going to be B, this is H. This is also H and this is B, okay? So here we're going to have 25 and we're going to cube it because it's B cubed, right? And then we're going to multiply it by H, which is 300, and then we're going to divide it by 12. And then we're going to do plus the area, which is 25 times 300 times DX squared. Now DX is going to be the distance from the centroid of the whole shape to the centroid of each shape, right? So the centroid of the whole shape we said is going to be 200 millimeters, right? Now, what's the centroid of shape one? Well, it's also actually at 200, right? So, because remember guys, we, again, we discussed this in the previous examples is that when you try to find the centroid of each shape, you have to reference it back to the datum, right? To the, to zero, zero, to the origin, okay? So, which means the centroid of shape one, it's going to be from here. This is where we have the origin, right? And so it's going to be this whole distance, right? That's the centroid of shape one, which is half of 400, which is 200. So dx is going to actually be zero, right? Because what we have here is x bar, which is 200, minus the centroid of shape one, which is also 200, okay? So which means this term is zero. That means this whole term goes to zero, okay? Now let's take a look at shape two. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you guys can see my handwriting. So again, we're gonna have IYC, which we said is B cubed H over 12. Now B here is 400 and we're gonna cube it, multiply it by H, which is 25, and then we're gonna divide it by 12. Then we're gonna have plus the area. Let me again zoom out a little bit. So the area here is going to be 400 and then times 25, okay? And dx, again, it's going to be also zero for this case, right? Because shape two is also at 200, right? So then we're gonna have 200 minus 200, so that's gonna be zero, so this whole term goes to zero, okay? Now, if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator, you should get 1.34 times 10 to the power of eight, and this is gonna have the units of millimeters to the power of four. Now let's go ahead and solve for ry. So here we're going to do 1.34 times 10 to the power of 8, right? And this is millimeters to the power of 4. And we're going to divide it by the total area, just like we did with our x. So we're going to have 25 times 300 plus 400 times 25, okay? And this is going to have the units of millimeters squared. And then we're going to take the square root of this whole thing, okay? Again, the units are going to cancel, and then the square root of millimeters squared is going to give us millimeters. And if you guys plug in all these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 87.5. Okay, so if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be D. If you guys enjoyed this video and you felt like you really understood the concepts and you enjoyed the whole learning process, then you're going to love our courses. I cover everything that you need to know for the FE exam. I walk you through step-by-step -step solution to all the problems and concepts and you really gonna feel so ready to pass your FE exam. So make sure to check it out. And before you go, make sure to also check out this playlist here that covers over 100 FE problems, which will help you with your FE preparation. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh, yeah.